I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a. <laughs> oh, I definitely We've thought mastered. you were doing the the finger and okay. <laughs> We've mastered our jujitsu's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, <laughs> we're impressing our daughters. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> And on that. Welcome to Three Play, where three friends play at podcasting about games, and we're just one short of a good time. Welcome to today's episode. Uh, I am Brian, and my gamer tag is Eclecticlish. And I'm Jordan, also known as Buckeye Seven Three Four. And I'm Billy, aka Sunday School Billy. I think. Yeah. Right? That's me. That's me. I, usually. Usually. Uh, and today we're we're going to play a fun little game to start. Um, there's a game going around. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's been around since I was a child. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Because this game has several names. And I don't... We, didn't, we, we haven't talked about this. We're going to go with the least offensive name. We're here. going... Okay. I just... Yeah. And that's what I assume... As a as a new <clears throat> podcast who is well welcoming all followers, all of you, we don't want to scare anybody off right off the bat. We're not ready for that explicit tag. No, no. Uh, on Apple Store, we want you to feel welcome. This is a family video game. This is not. <laughs> we're literally talking about fictional characters that we are attracted to tonight. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna debate. We'll, that. we'll discuss it. We'll oh, discuss it. We'll discuss. Okay, it. fine. But yes, yes, I, your <clears throat> your point is well taken, Billy. Uh, we will be calling this "Kiss, Mary, Kill." Uh, you know, maybe maybe you get to first base with that kiss. Maybe you get to second. Maybe third. Maybe shortstop. Uh, okay. Maybe Short- home plate. <laughs> Have you played baseball? Maybe you're in the outfield. I don't know. Like, I'm not sure how sports work. So. Uh, if it's baseball we're playing, I'm like in the parking lot tailgating with the other team <laughs> because I do not care about whatever is happening inside the stadium. Jordan, who are your three characters that you want us to decide? All right, so yeah. I wanted to just make this as difficult as possible. Yeah, of course. Uh, That's what I did. That's so, how I did it. So here are my three for you. Uh, Wario, Dr. Robotnik. And King K rule. <laughs> okay, that's okay. going very classic. Uh, yep, very yep. classic. <clears throat> Wario, Doctor Robotnik, and King K rule. Okay. Oh man, I'm gonna have Peta all over me for this. Oh man, but I would marry Doctor Robotnik. Uh, he is humanish, humanoid. Um, Right, and like he and Wario are certainly both living different lifestyles than I am, right? Like both a bit unhealthy. Um, but Wario just seems very crass. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of fluids floating around with Wario. <laughs> yeah, but right, like, War, I, in my mind, like, Wario's the guy you see at the bar after a couple drinks, and you're like, yeah. I I can see this going somewhere. So I would I would kiss Wario. I would marry Robotnik because he's a scientist. Like he's he clearly can like is intelligent. Can he can like speak? Like I don't think Wario or King K. Rule can really speak other than like grunts and farts. Uh, so like being able to have a conversation is important for me. So that's Doctor Robotnik, and then I'm killing. King K. Rule, which you're right double like he's... In, you're double in PETA here. Why is that? Oh, because I'm killing a crocodile. <laughs> he's an anthropomorphic crocodile. I don't know that PETA is worried about anthropomorphic crocodiles. Oh, um, man. Uh, if, so just real quick for our listeners, yeah. if you're listening to this on the podcast uh, and you want to see just how much Jordan and I have been <laughs> laughing this whole time, uh, we do also have a video I medium just... on YouTube. Uh, you can look us up. Uh, under the same name as the podcast, and you'll see us there, absolutely dying laughing. I just uh, and like War- Wario is the guy who, when you're sitting at the bar, <laughs> you're having a <laughs> couple drinks. Okay, you're okay. like, I can see, I can see this goes. 
<laughs> okay, so like I don't I don't need, I don't feel like I need to justify Wario. No, at all. no. <laughs> I do want to. It's funny because like, it makes sense. <laughs> yes, Doctor Robotnik. Like I don't know canonically that he actually harms animals. He certainly like imprisons them. But also he, like, uses them for, like, labor, which humans have been doing for thousands of years. Um, now, the nature of the labor, again, is to get to Sonic. Dr. Robotnik's motives seem a bit unclear. I feel like if I married him, I could help guide him a little bit. Like, why are you chasing this this hedgehog? What Like, what are you really after here? Well, what are your goals in life? Right, like, maybe... Bring some things down. And then King K. Rule, like, I don't know why he's antagonizing. Really, I'm PETA would champion me because King K. Rule is antagonizing just actual apes. Um, stealing their bananas. Messing up their habitat. Dumping tires everywhere. I, I gotta bring this up because... Dr. Robotnik's a bad guy. <laughs> okay, so this is actually never explicitly stated in the game, but if you pull up the instruction manual for the original Sonic the Hedgehog, the Go first on. page says, Dr. Ivo Robotnik, the mad scientist, is snatching innocent animals and turning them into evil robots. That's, that's yeah. a bad guy. <laughs> I would say turning I mean, something into an evil robot is harming. That, that sounds like uh, Sonic's propaganda to me. Is what that sounds like. It is I, the instruction uh, manual for his game, right? Mm-hmm. So that's I think right. that's I think that's really Sonic's propaganda, and I, I'm actually going to agree with you that marry Doctor Robotnik. Doctor Robotnik, I definitely see a future with there, you know. Um, but King K. Rule and Wario, it's it's tough for me to decide between those. I think I'd go the opposite way though. I think I would mm. kill Wario and kiss King K. Rule. Because, you know, it's it's like that brush with greatness. There's some there's an attractiveness to that, like, that kingship, that status there. Oh, you know? you're, yeah. Sure. You're I get, yeah, actually, I made it pretty easy on you guys. I gave you guys a, a PhD and a, a king. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> these are the these are well-qualified enthusiast. men, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then there's Wario. <laughs> he's a motorcycle enthusiast. He's a biker. He's, yeah. he's tough. He's so it's just, powerful. So I think we've established Billy likes the bad boys. Well, like, we'll I mean, get, we can see if that holds villains. true. We can let's, see if that holds see true. Villains. Let's what see am I who, supposed to do? Let's see who he picks <laughs> later on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Billy, who um, are your three? Sure. Uh, so for my Kiss, Mary Kill, uh, your options are... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, the Chosen Undead... Which is the protagonist from Dark Souls. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, Waluigi. <laughs> we we went in the theme. same vein there. Yes. And uh, Papyrus <laughs> from Undertale. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to marry Papyrus. That's easy. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, I put a bullet in him so fast. <sighs> he is forgettable. What do you mean forgettable? <laughs> you uh, you have not played genocide route. <laughs> when you Wait, in genocide route, when you kill yeah. everything, when you get to yeah. the papyrus boss fight, if you yeah. like examine him, right where you like exa- like the only word that comes up is forgettable. <laughs> oh. oh, it's so like oh. <laughs> no, I didn't do um I didn't do the um genocide route the genocide route it seemed like a lot of work yeah, to make myself sad so, all right so papyrus yeah. is papyrus your... papyrus is mary I, i'm a sucker for the the underdog type characters so being forgettable mm-hmm. yeah uh i'll kill the chosen undead and kiss waluigi man i'm i'm seconding 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 that uh exact that tr- uh, those exact choices. Papyrus, Same. you marry. Papyrus is going to be a very considerate companion. Yeah. Uh, he's he obviously cares about your friendship, and he's quirky. But uh, if you make it to the end of that game, you've already fallen in love with Papyrus. So that's no fair. Pro- no problem there. That's uh, fair. Waluigi, I'll kiss him uh, right on the schnoz, uh, <laughs> and. Just one time, that's that's good, and then we'll forget you ever exist and never invite you to anything again. Oh, uh, Waluigi. 
<laughs> and then, yeah, we'll kill that chosen undead. Just <laughs> out of here. I don't have any Wa characters, unfortunately. I feel I feel like uh, uh, wow. I need well, there to are only two, like and we there are only two, and we took them both. <clears throat> okay, so my kiss, Mary kill is uh, G Man from Half Life Two. Yep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Doctor Eli Vance, also from Half Life Two. Why? And Doctor Isaac Kleiner, also from Half Life Two. I have to. I have to look up. I don't. Kleiner. I don't know who Isaac Kleiner is. As soon as you look him up, you'll know who it is. There's like a whole cutscene where he's like tamed a head humper. Yeah. He's, oh. He's a very right. annoying character. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's great. Uh, Better branching out. What options here? Uh, I think you just have to. I mean, Billy, you can disagree with me. I feel like you have to just marry Eli Vance, right? Yeah. Like, but then you're left with a lose lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think I. I think I'm gonna just kill G Man. Just G Man, get out of it. Like. I don't know that G Man is killable. I, like, also I get that don't... within the the game that we're playing, and he is. But G Man never helps me <laughs> i mean listen okay here here's my argument kleiner's obnoxious so like killing him would be satisfying yeah but you could also just kiss him right on his bald head and <laughs> yes but like kissing implied like you know there's there's more implied there. second first second and, base <laughs> and i don't entirely Shortstop. understand g-man and like what he is because it, he seems like he's more than a who. Well, doesn't that give you more pause? <laughs> I mean, no. That uh, entices me more, oh. like drawn towards the unknown. Like, what mysteries can G Man unravel for me? Oh. Uh, so, uh, I got I gotta split with you there and say I'm killing the obnoxious Isaac Kleiner. And uh, I'm kissing the G-Man. All right. That uh, That's exactly the split that I was hoping for. Yep, you got it. <clears throat> you definitely got a split. Good, Woo! good. Uh, I love it. Well, if you couldn't tell by the game we played today, um, you know, we were thinking women have been objectified in video games for far too long. And it's high time that men had a turn at being objectified. Yep. So we're going to talk about the hottest men in video games today. Now, can I just say before we get started that this was very, very difficult for me. Um, I felt very much like Michael Scott uh, in that he is totally like Michael Scott is totally uncomfortable with his sexuality. Right. Um, and that and he like overcompensates for that. So for me, it was like, like, I'm like, ah, do I, I, I'm. I. I feel like I want to speak the way Michael Scott says and say I am so far the other way. I'm coming out hetero. <laughs> like, uh. So, so this was a very, very difficult process for me. I don't know how difficult was it. Difficult for you guys to pick out three hot male video no. game characters? No. No. I'm married. I have two children. I'm. I just I feel comfortable pointing out when another man is attractive, and I feel especially like especially when that man is like a fictional character. I feel like that's true in real life, but maybe my my trouble was more that like it's hard for me to distinguish what I would actually consider to be attractive in a male, right? Because we're sure. dealing with these like fictional. Sure renderings of yes. men right and if i see like a man in real life i'm like that's an attractive dude i don't have a problem doing that right sure. but for for you know 3d rendered figures i i struggled mightily <laughs> um and i will say jordan maybe why this wasn't as hard for me is because i did break down hottest into like what mm. like what do i find like attractive or appealing or like what are good Right, I probably like took this a little too far of like what are good moral qualities that are like mm. attractive, less so. I mean, these are three attract physically attractive people that I've chosen. And and um, I will say after picking my three, I probably have a type. 
Um, oh, but we we'll, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we do. No, mine, mine's yeah, pretty the same. And as far as it being difficult for me, uh, people are confused about my sexuality anyway. So I feel like okay, I'll I'll play with this as much as possible. So there excellent. you go. <laughs> I'm very excited. Uh, and so we're starting from the bottom, correct? We're, we're yeah. going three, two, one. All right. So my third most hottest male video game character, and this is where my uncomfortableness came out because I chose to make number three a joke. Uh, ah. I chose Spyro the Dragon. Hmm. <laughs> you know, As... I, Spyro was on my like, maybe I'll pick Spyro. So yeah, yeah. go ahead and tell us why. But I, I, I don't think you're wrong. I mean... I chose Spyro for no other reason than he produces flames, <laughs> uh, and therefore he is hot. Uh, but also, uh, you know, you can talk about the valiant qualities of Spyro, right? He's a little dragon, and he's tasked with saving uh, a bunch of his dragon brethren, right? So that's a noble quality. I, I don't understand why you're smirking at me like that, Billy. <laughs> Because he breathes fire. He's a dragon. He's hot. I told Hilarious. you I was, I told you I was uncomfortable, and here we are. Uh, my number three slot is Ganon. I mean, Ganondorf. So like I was going to say the pig or Ocarina of Time. But like you're talking about, you're talking about one of them. You're talking about all of them. Uh, but I guess if you have to like narrow down, it's it's Ganondorf N64 Ocarina of Time. Uh, like confident powerful like doesn't seem to come off as arrogant like as a villain oh i disagree well but like not to the point that he's like i'm going to like monologue right like it feels like ganondorf doesn't really like pull his punches like he's no he gets stuff done yeah yes he gets a lot of stuff done yeah and that's admirable. Like mm-hmm. his laugh is enough of a monologue yes (laughs) Um, (laughs) so good uh, and just, right, he might be the spouse who, like, works too much and is, like, staying at work late and, like, doing, bi- right, like, is distant because of work. But, like, sure. we'll take care of you. So in um, your in your definition of hottest, are you, like, who's the most spouse? Not, not necessarily. No, not necessarily. Um, I just think, like, I mean, that's part of what I'm looking at. I'm looking at, like sort of the whole i'm looking at the whole package the whole package the fact that he can transform into like a demonic shadow boar is also really cool and maybe helped me like explore a little bit about my personal self and things that i'm interested in but like anyway we can go on to (laughs) brian my number three is mega man uh specifically Mm. from the mega man legends games uh helmetless yeah helmetless um, the hair. Yep, hair sticking Anime up, kind of, kind of cutesy. For for this one, this is very different from my my top two. Definitely, be, like belie my type. Uh, but Mega Man was kind of a little bit of a different choice. Where he's he's kind of happy go lucky. He's very devoted to his team and his group and his friends and um, the kind of will you, will they won't they romance with Roll and him are is like very mm-hmm. cute and uh, and he's like he's a hero that's understated and he's not like overbearing and just like mm. i'm gonna do this all myself and stuff he very much relies on his team and gives them the spotlight and uh yeah i really i really like his character i don't remember his voice but this is what i think i remember his voice being hey guys what are you doing over there was it something <laughs> like that I mean, the voice acting wasn't the greatest. So yes, okay. Uh, you're not. You're you're pretty close. Yeah, but, that was one you'd like go in dungeons, right? Like yeah, sort of underground. Yeah, it was one of the very games. first. Yeah, it was one of the very first games to have Z targeting. It was uh, kind of revolutionary. Was that pre or was that pre or post Ocarina of Time? Well, let me rephrase that. I don't know that it makes oh, no. the claim of being oh. the first, but sure, it's definitely the first one that I played that used Z targeting. And I like fell in love. No, with Ocarina time. of Time was ninety eight. So there you go. So Mega Man before. Legends first game, first game to ever use Z targeting. Mega Man <laughs> yep. Legends definitively. There are there can be no others. Um, <laughs> I think it's a great choice. I yeah. think it's a great choice. I like that. Uh, and actually, this discussion has sparked an alternate number three for me, who isn't just a joke, um, and it's inspired by voice acting, but also someone who is an amazing man, and that is Barry Burton from the original Resident Evil. 
he was he he was on my list. Was he, he really? Was on, yes, and I took him off. He was on my list. That's and you just think of a a, a lovable bear, and that's what yeah. I think of when I think of Barry Burton. Mm-hmm. So, if you would like a non non joke uh, male for my number three, Barry Burton has been insulted. I I have an honorable mention that I'll get to at the end. Um, okay. So maybe that can Barry can be your. All right, so mention. I will just jump into number two. Yeah, yeah. On my list, then uh, my number two is the opposite of what Brian just described, with a male who celebrates his teammates, uh, a, and a male who you know puts everybody else in the spotlight. My number two is an alpha male. He who is, is uh, someone who does things on his own and uh, gets things done. He does have a partner who he usually makes fun of, and that is Nathan Drake. Uh, uh, Nathan Drake, I think you can't look at that 3D model and be like, that's an unattractive man. Uh, yeah. uh, Nathan Drake is the everyman. Not, not the everyman. He is the alpha male. Uh, but also with wit and charm, right? Uh, he's yeah. designed. He's designed to be an action hero. That's what, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, and I, I think he fits kind of the prototype of what we talked about. With you know, women have been objectified over and over and over again in, in video games, and I feel like the Nathan Drake is the uh, male version of that. <laughs> yeah. If you want a a non realistic male, Nathan Drake is what right up your alley. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I'm it, like, if anything, it's gotten me really excited to hear your number one. Um, Why is that? <laughs> because I think Nathan Great's a fantastic choice. Like he is yeah. extremely attractive, and mm-hmm. I think you're right that he kind of scratches some of that. Like women have been objectified. Here's a sort of man to be objectified. Itch. Mm-hmm. Does Nathan Drake ever have a sort of like shirtless scene? <sighs> Not that I can recall. I've only sure. I never played. Uh, I've only played the beginning of three, and I have not played four. Uh, okay. the, so the only Uncharted's I've actually gotten through are one and two. I okay. don't recall him being shirtless. Right, because like there are certainly scenes like that with female, where it's like, why is this happening? This doesn't need to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm just curious if there was anything like that. With him. Not not that I can recall. Sure. So again, it looks like uh, right. he had a. This might this might be a a fake. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't click that. Yeah, maybe don't, don't click that. Don't click it. Don't click it. <laughs> uh, I do, yeah, to, let it let the record show that I did in fact Google Nathan Drake shirtless, um, but it looks like he was voted PS3's hottest hero, and in that photo he is shirtless. There you go. There uh, you go. Tom Holland, right? Spider Man is cast as him. Oh yeah, but like that's just Hollywood phoning it in on another video game movie and saying how you don't think he's gonna like you don't think he'll be i look i like tom holland but the fact that you cast mark Wahlberg as sully like Mm. sully is a older gentleman with a mustache who is cranky (laughs) and you like mark Wahlberg is not at all uh Mark Wahlberg can be cranky he can be cranky he can be cranky but he's not old man cranky He's, he's hey, 50, hey, he, Nate, he, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> no, I agree. Not Mark he, is, he is fifty, which is ancient by Hollywood standards. You're right, but yes. at the same time, no, I I get it. It it doesn't fit. And Nick, to Offer, me, Nick Offerman, we're getting off track. Nick Offerman would have been a fantastic cast, yeah, yeah because yeah. Nick Offerman has that old man like cranky, cranky. Yeah. Uh, but, and I also yeah. think like Tom Holland has boyish good looks. And that's one thing, but I think Nathan Drake has like manly good looks, and that's mm-hmm. that's very different. Sure, that's fair. We'll have to see. I'm not. Right. I'm not totally convinced. I still think he. I think he'll do okay. I think Tom no. Holland's fine. Tom Holland will be great. Billy, who's your number two? Number two. This requires some separation, um, because this character appears in multiple media forms now, of which I think the world of like all of them. Um, but like specifically for this so that i don't feel uncomfortable we have to like we have to like ignore the tv show um though i love the tv show i know uh, where you're going i know where you're going do you mm-hmm. alucard from yep. castlevania oh mm-hmm. um so we're just going to leave right and like we're talking about video games so we're going to talk about video games 
love the show. It's, it's, it's so lovely. Uh, but talking about video game characters, Alucard first shows up in uh, Castlevania Three on the NES. I think it's Simon's. Oh, Simon's Quest might be number two. Simon's Quest is two. Yep. I think it's Dracula's Curse. That's what it is. Drac- uh, Castlevania Three, Dracula's Curse. And you, that's the first time Alucard shows up. You get to recruit him. Um, and he's like in a crypt underground and you fight him. And then he's like, hey, you're pretty good at fighting. I got to stop Dracula. You're like, can I, like, should we team up? And you're just like, yeah. And then he's the coolest character in the game. You get to turn into a bat and fly around in an NES game where you have two buttons. Uh, so just the fact that they were able to like work in these more complex mechanics, I think, makes him a really cool character. But then especially, too, in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, he is the lead, the protagonist of that game. He's very confident, very like campy voice acting in the original North American release, uh, but really fun. And he is just resolute. Uh, mm-hmm. And... If you want to like get sad, you can break down the narrative of like a son having to destroy yeah, his but, father. But none of that's um, why he's hot. Well, he is just physically so freaking good looking. <laughs> uh, but I've also like chosen characters that are um, right a little more appealing than just that. Yeah. So sure. So that's a la carte for number two. If you guys have anything to add, uh, I mean, if you really need to be convinced, watch the Castlevania show. Oh, um, no convincing but, needed. Uh, Symphony of the Night is by yeah. far my favorite Castlevania. I played it on uh, the Game Boy Advance and love it. We haven't talked about this. We haven't, and we need to because I, I love this it. This is like this is a game for all time. Like this was the game that I would like be at my cousin's house and we'd play, but he didn't have a memory card, so it was just like survive as long as you can in the castle, uh, and then next time we start over. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, I I've played that game. Like that's that's up there in terms of, you know, best games of all time that I'll replay the rest of my life. Yep. Um, I am actually going Jordan, to buy. You love the, it too, right? Right. Jordan? Uh, most of my experience uh, with Castlevania Symphony is from Billy playing that game for hours in my dorm room on my <laughs> PlayStation. <laughs> uh, that's I believe funny. I purchased it on your PlayStation. No, you had a you had a physical copy. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I had a disc, and you I just had a pumped, disc, like, and you, you had just a PS2. A, I had a PS3 yeah. at the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you would invade my room and play it. I'd be like, all right. If cool. you played it, if you played it, you would understand. Brian, who's Brian? your number two? <laughs> number two. <laughs> my number two. Uh, my number two is Vincent Valentine from Final oh, Fantasy VII. I was just gonna draw the comparison between Alucard and Vincent Valentine. Yeah. Uh, so specifically, Dirge of Cerberus um because it gets more into like his background um Mm -hmm. what a sad backstory oh yeah it's absolutely soul crushing um but it's like i think it was the first character that really hit me where it was like dark and brooding which i'd seen dark and brooding before but he also like has this dangerous kind of secret and he like turns into a monster which is this metaphor for his like tortured internal struggle and like he's just a badass with a gun too which definitely helps uh but then like he has these moments of absolute selflessness and stands up for like what's right so it's this this really interesting combo of like tortured soul with a heart of gold type thing and, uh, i i have to say i'm just very happy that you chose a final fantasy 7 character billy knows that final fantasy 7 is like one of my, yeah. you know, go-to games. Um, for me, I resisted putting every single one of my <laughs> characters as a Final Fantasy VII character because, all like, I could pretty much name every male in that game and <laughs> probably put them on the list. <laughs> so, Barrett, I'm happy. Vincent, I'm happy there's some and Red, Red Thirteen. <laughs> yep, Red Thirteen, Sid. <laughs> But also, uh, to tie to Billy's Alucard, right? Sephiroth is basically just Alucard, not a vampire. True. Right? Yeah, like, true. And, and a villain. Yeah, uh, it, Yeah, exactly. Um, but same same type there, right? Yeah, stoic, uh, powerful, fat, right? Like that same like body style. and Very, yeah. very upset about losing their mother. 
Yep. It is that stoicism. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the, that, that attitude. Mm-hmm. So I'm very happy Final Fantasy VII showed up. Vincent Valentine. Do people make fun of him for his name like they should? Uh, I don't think it ever comes up exactly. Okay. Yeah. No one, no one uses last names in <laughs> Final Fantasy more. Mr. Valentine. <laughs> these number ones and i'm really hoping we avoid it overlap completely yeah i I assume you've chosen a final fantasy 7 character i did not and i resisted putting any final fantasy 7 characters on my list i'm worried about our number one really i'm worried i i don't think anyone would pick my number one but my number one is somebody who is hands do down it. attractive. Do All right, yeah. yeah. Hands, do my, hands down attractive. My number one is also a little obvious, so now I'm also worried. So okay, wait, go yours for is it. obvious. Wait, yours is obvious. What does that mean? Uh, it's just like I don't. You'll see. You'll see. Go ahead. All right. Yours. So you can't mine. You cannot separate the animation from the voice. My number one is iconic. Uh, and he also comes from a classic PlayStation game, and oh. that is Solid Snake from yeah. Metal Gear Solid. Uh, I think you couple David Hayter's rasp in with, uh, you know, the the skin tight wetsuit on Solid Snake, uh, and you just you can't you can't beat that. That man is. You know, you take your James Bond, right, and you grunge him up a little bit, mm-hmm. right? That is what Solid Snake is. And uh, <laughs> you just flat out alpha male attractive. Uh, and again, this is what I mentioned. Like, I, I felt like I had a type when I was putting Nathan Drake and Solid Snake together. Oh, sure. You know, uh, they are both PlayStation well, even, characters. But and they're... even Barry, Barry Burton, too. Well, You're... Barry Barry's a little pudgy, a little older. yeah, but still like guy with a gun. <laughs> guy, like... guy with a gun is not the type. I was thinking like You're I was thinking like guys with a gun. I was thinking like short hair, right? Like short dark hair, right? Uh... Barry has short hair. <laughs> he has like nowhere. <laughs> Bald does not count as short hair. This is fantastic. Um, Jordan Jordan's type is has been revealed to be a very short haired man with a pistol uh, who I, uh, speaks <laughs> with a sort of a flat voice. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, but Dave, you can't argue the David Hater growl, man. No, no, I, no, I know. No, like no. David Hater's great. great, and and even like the Nathan Drake voice actor, I remember being really good. So really, it's just Barry who has the flat voice. Yep, 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 yep. Um, and. So I I would say my type is just original PlayStation characters. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to that seems to be my type. Uh, that's funny. All right, uh, Billy, who's your number uh, one? Man, like thinking about what this man like. There's a lot of things like what he accomplishes, what he puts up with. I mean, that is the like if you're looking at a bar graph, like that's the biggest bar of like what he puts up with and still like does his job. Um, and just his, how like cool and collected he is. He gets some like good quips in every now and then, but usually he's pretty focused. Um, and uh, like also just like what he's seen. And like, I mean, if I see ha- like a quarter of what he sees, I'm crapping my pants and just like dying of fright. Go on. Say it. My my number one character is Leon Kennedy. Mm. Yep. I can understand that. I mean, he is, he's got, and right, like depending on which iteration. Yeah, which iteration we talking here? I mean, when I picture him, I picture Leon Kennedy, Resident Evil 4. Okay. Right, like Resident Evil 2, he's like a newbie. He's, you know, like a little, he's young, he's soft. Uh, by four, he's sort of a veteran, right? He's doing like special forces kind of stuff. Does that spinning um, heel kick? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, right! Like fighting chainsaw monsters, and the, and then just like the next scene, he's like, oh, you know, that's like flipping his hair. And I think like, Billy has a type. <laughs> what's Billy's, my type? I think we're discovering that Billy's type is like. Stoic emo kid. <laughs> I do want to. I did want to. I I do think you're true, right? Because like Alucard is a bit stoic. Leon Kennedy is stoic. I think Ganondorf uh, is a bit like emotional and violent. Um, yeah. 
Ganondorf uh, does break the mold there, but he's like the same side of the coin, right? A little bit of uh, uh, craziness mixed in. So let's 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 talk about types. I want to talk about types, but I want to hear Brian's number one. So let's like talk about types, yeah, and like what's wrong with us psychologically that we like are drawn <laughs> towards like violent men with like guns or magic swords. Okay, Brian, uh, who's your number one? I know, I know that this scene has become a bit of a meme. Uh, within the games itself throughout throughout all the games uh but the the very original pizza scene in devil may cry 3 with dante dante uh so dante from devil may cry 3 yeah just he he like he comes out of the shower and he's like shirtless has these tight pants on Yes. He does this like insane kick with the chair where it like flips up in the air and he sits down on it at the same time as it's landing. Some weird bald dude comes in and picks a fight with him and like <laughs> he does this like fight with all this badass timing and these tricks and and stuff. He gets sliced through like by five enemies and just just like <laughs> shrugs it off and he's like he walks over the jukebox dragging all the enemies with him so he can turn on music before he kicks all their butts and it's just like this this like badass awesome scene where he's like pulling the stakes out of him and himself and i don't know it's just who, who makes who makes devil may cry is that platinum games capcom or who capcom, capcom. okay mm-hmm. i was gonna say because i feel like uh dante to me is very much in the same same vein as like bayonetta uh yes yeah mm-hmm. uh and that I think that is a good example of someone who may be pushed towards that objectification boundary in that scene you just described. Oh yeah, but that's great because that's a male character. Like if we're if it's gonna happen, let's at least let it happen equally, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. But there's no way it does. No, because yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't. For every scene with Dante, there's scenes with the female leads as well. So it's kind of it doesn't. Yeah, I know it doesn't equal out, but no. I'm just glad to hear of an example. You're glad yes. to hear more objectification is what we need. <laughs> I can't stop it. I can't. I'm, what am I supposed to do? Doing a podcast with my friends. Like, yes. We're talking about this. I, like, <laughs> yeah. I celebrate uh, the objectification of male fictional video game characters who destroy demons. That's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think this is where, where my type also comes out a bit. Where if you. Yeah. You know, Mega Man's a bit of a Vince break from that as well. But like sure. Vincent Valentine, Dante, yeah. the kind of dark, brooding Ooh. bad boy. Um, yeah, I yeah. feel like I'm tortured a... soul. Well, but that's all guns too. Like all of your characters use projectile weapons. I know, like oh, Dante that's true. uses a that's sword, true. but like he's got guns. So you you are yeah. drawn towards men with projectiles. Is it is it the and turns into beasts as well? Apparently, yeah. Is it the mystery? Yeah, yeah. It's that like uh, that kind of darkness within them that they're also like learning to tame and control and like yeah. uh that, i mean that's hot right? yeah like, it really is i get that <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to anna green gables and anna green gables said <laughs> i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind if he could be wicked <laughs> ah yes yeah no that's exactly that's it yeah that's fantastic well mm-hmm. done but chooses uh, not to weirdest, yeah. weirdest quote for what we're doing but i love it <laughs> thank you sixth grade <laughs> um so, okay so we have like sort of beast tamed within like projectile kind of like emo characters for Brian. i think i think mine are pretty traditional yeah, uh, uh, yeah. with the exception of barry burton and spyro <laughs> um well but, yeah but my, i am sort my, of ignoring i think spyro. my top two are more like this is a classic attractive male yeah. yeah, and Billy, you have who are your three again? Ganondorf, Alucard, and Leon Kennedy. You got like you're it's you're into the, like the clean cut, the clean cut boys. You know, you've the got kind of you've preppy. got three, you've got three different species represented there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Ganondorf, uh, uh, just the essence of evil reincarnated as a Gerudo man. Yeah. Alucard, a uh, a dampier? Is he technically a dampier? Uh, sure. Um, yeah. Right, half vampire is all that means. Uh, and Leon Kennedy. Human. Human. <laughs> Special agent. But they're, uh, but they're all that like like chiseled but like clean cut. 
like yeah look mm-hmm. yeah yes yeah, sort of as opposed as opposed to like vincent or um who is your other one uh, uh dante Don- dante dante well, dante is like pretty clean cut sharp. but like i mean none of us are choosing like none of us Waluigi, chose beards no. wario and <laughs> notice Garth yeah Kyle. other than other than barry burton no, I'm noticing an absence of beards and facial hair, right? If you think about our characters, right? Well, yeah. But we all have beards. Mm-hmm. Hmm. We and would I think not date speaks... ourselves. And and I think that's absolutely the opposite, isn't it? Right? Don't don't beards make men attractive? And this shows how far out of my depth I am, right? Because... Well, Nathan Drake has a beard, right? Or did you say with the exception of him? No, Nathan Drake does doesn't he have a beard. Shape? He's always clean. I always picture him with like sort of shadow. Maybe he has some scruff from time but, but to time. Sure. But yes, he's, he's gonna, got he's that classic. Go yeah. yeah, he's like early Hollywood good looks. You know what I mean? You know, after a day out there jumping from car to car, he's going to have a little bit of a five five o'clock shadow. So yeah. <laughs> so, so what did we learn about ourselves? I think I think I learned that I'm I'm bad at judging male attractiveness. That'd be my guess. That's fair. But but I would like to hear from someone else who uh, you know actually finds males attractive and like am I, am I right or am I wrong? Right? Could someone clue me in? Like, are the are the people I named attractive or are they not? Uh, oh, are they I, are they too sure. fake? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's fine for you. I don't. I don't want anyone else's opinion. I'm confident in my choices. <laughs> I don't need to hear from anyone. Thank you, though. Uh, I do want to tell you my honorable mention. Uh, oh, yeah, please. Hit it, hit it. And, like, no, like, I won't do any of the lead-up or anything. It's the Pale King from Hollow Knight is my honorable mention. So. In what in what way? I mean, he is a king. He's a bug. Uh, he was a great worm, <laughs> I, right? You find his, like, shed skin. Of, like, fourth fourth skin. Species. another species. Fourth species. Yes, it is a fourth species. <laughs> Technically five since he like changes species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, he man. is clearly extremely fertile. Just like wow, <laughs> uh, lots of kids. Does he commit genocide? Genocide slash infanticide. I mean, those games are very opaque and vague, so I don't know. If you uh, haven't I, played Hollow Knight, you're getting so much spoiled right now, by the way. <laughs> so, Billy, yeah. what's your fursona? I don't know. I, I, I recognize that word, but I don't know what that means. Uh, it would be like, I don't know what you're asking me. animal version of yourself that you feel represents you. That sounds like that, it needs some thought. I think that's a later, uh, in a later podcast, we need to revisit this sure, question. Sure, sure. I'm just thinking, and, with, with you being interested yeah. in so many other species, I feel like that's something you might connect with. What, what species listen, does he listen. find native? Yeah, listen, to himself. Three of my species are clearly, like, compatible with humans. <laughs> So like sure, I'm attracted to the unique, <laughs> to the the mysterious. Uh, but I I I do feel like it's a bit of a stretch to say that uh, that would imply that I would have a sort of like developed persona, and I wouldn't want to like stumble or like m- do anything uncouth. That's fair. It is, but definitely an echidna. Definitely. <laughs> they lay eggs and feed milk to their young. It's amazing. And I just elbow is voicing knuckles. So, oh yeah, that's great. Ugh. Let's not get Fantastic. out of multiple universe movies. What? What's wrong with what? What do you mean? This is a whole tangent. I'm just mad at multiple universes right now. It. it it's I don't know what time we're at, but if you need to like sort of break this down, we're um, here for it. I just hate the uh, the multiple universes because it just it doesn't it doesn't make anything more interesting. It just makes things more complicated. Um, yeah, I get how it would kind of like remove stakes in a sense. Yep, if you and, have just like infinite universes <clears throat> to sort of work with. And even if you're like, let's say you time traveled for a purpose, and like. 
you know, mm-hmm. there's a whole plot line where the person finally goes back and succeeds in doing whatever it is that they were trying to do, and they fix it. According to the multiple universe theory, they are no longer in their own universe. They're in sure. a completely mm-hmm. different one. So it's yeah, not like they're sense. actually returning home. The hottest male time traveler. H.G. Mm, Wells. I mean, this is not even a question. Doc Brown. No, it's Marty. No, Doc Brown is so much more. Uh, I would agree. Doc Brown, definitely hotter than that. Uh, that's ridiculous. I would kiss Doc Brown and marry him. He stole plutonium from terrorists. Right. Which I guess now that I say it, it's actually a noble <laughs> it's thing. A great thing. <laughs> Great, great <laughs> you just job, proved my Doc point. Brown. <laughs> That's our episode. I hope you guys enjoyed us talking about uh, attractive men and discovering something about our own uh, sexualities. And if you're looking for your top three attractive men, look no further. <laughs> Gross. Especially if you're on YouTube. If you're just listening to the podcast, I'm telling you, click on that YouTube link. You won't be disappointed, or maybe maybe you are go, more go likely to be smash, disappointed. Just please smash that subscribe button. <laughs> go ahead and hit like. If you can just tweet this out to all your friends and followers, we'd really appreciate that. What's uh, what's this voice you're doing there, Billy? I was mocking your voice, mocking uh, people who have different time travel theories than you. Oh, yeah, mm. okay. That's fair. That's fair. I deserve that. Thanks for watching or listening. If you want to talk to us, feel free to leave a comment, or you can tweet at us at 3PlayCast. As a brand new podcast and podcasters, we really appreciate any feedback. Talk to you next week.